everybody, it's Lon Seidman and the folks from Corsair send us their new Saber mouse to take a look at. This is a gaming mouse and this particular one is the Laser RGB. So it has a, a laser pickup here at the bottom which is very, very accurate. It's a really cool looking mouse and very lightweight. It's only about 100 grams or about 3 ounces or so. Uh, so really not that uh, heavy to hold in your hand. Very comfortable to use. I like just the, the overall contours of it. And what's nice for my hand, at least, is that I can reach all the buttons. I've tested some other mice that have had a hard time kind of reaching uh, over to get whatever button they've uh, put in my way to push. And this one actually is, uh, everything's in reach and very comfortable. Uh, what's cool is that all eight of these buttons can be configured. So you can have this thing do uh, whatever you want, really. You can uh, assign keystrokes to particular buttons. You can uh, do macros that can do a combination of keystrokes, mouse buttons, even mouse movements can be logged. I'm going to show you all that in a minute. Uh, so really a lot of stuff that might be of interest to more than just gamers, especially if you're you know, in an environment where you're constantly having to hit a keystroke command, uh, you're, maybe you're in Photoshop or something, things that you would normally take your hand off the mouse for, you could assign to the mouse and have it issue those keywords. Uh, the only issue is that it only works right now with Windows, so all those macros and everything uh, have to be configured on a Windows computer, so I would say not for Mac users yet. Uh, hopefully they'll come up with some software that will uh, give Mac users some of the love as well, because I really like uh, the functionality of being able to configure all these buttons. You can even configure the left and right mouse buttons to do things other than what they were designed to do, uh, which is pretty handy. There is a lot of lights on here too, as you can see. So you've got uh, four distinct lights and you can change them as well. There's a, a plethora of colors to choose from. All 16.7 million that you can think of are uh, in there. And I'll show you how that works in a minute too. So you can kind of customize uh, how it looks on your desk. Uh, it's USB. It has uh, four different um, pickup settings. So you can even uh, set the interval in which it's checking for movement. So it goes from like a thousand hertz down to a lower number as well. Uh, you can even configure a button to uh, make it temporarily go into a low DPI mode. So you can make the mouse pointer move very slowly without having to uh, hit a button and move it permanently into a particular DPI configuration. I'm going to show you all that as well. Uh, the cable's pretty nice it's, it's, too. It's a braided kind of cloth cable, so it's not going to tangle up all that easily. Uh, and it's really pretty attractive. And they even uh, put some Velcro on there as well, so you can wind it up and take it with you somewhere. So, uh, so that's the overall hardware design. Let's take a look at its configuration because it is very in-depth. I probably won't have enough time to cover everything that this thing can do, uh, but we'll, we'll cover the important parts, and then we can uh, take some questions and do a follow-up. All right, here we are in the software control panel, and there is a lot to configure here. So you can see immediately that we have access to all of the buttons on the mouse and all the things that we can do to it. Uh, you do have profiles that you can save, so you can basically uh, assign you know, a profile, a Counter-Strike, for example, and have a whole set of macros and button assignments for that. And then with one key press, you can even configure a button to change modes. Uh, you can then have it do something totally different for Photoshop or another game or something like that. So a lot of uh, available options here. And what we're going to do uh, to start off is set uh, a little macro on the top button here, the number eight. So I'm going to go in here and assign a new action. And uh, what it does here is gives us a whole bunch of options we can do. So we can record a macro, which is what we're going to do in a second. Uh, but we could also just have it drop a string of text or do a keystroke. Um, there are shortcuts that we can have it assigned. So you could even pull up a application like the calculator with a single button push. Uh, you can even set different DPI modes, which is the mouse sensitivity, um, timers, you, you name it. <laughs> there are things that you can uh, have the mouse configure itself to do, which is pretty cool. So what we're going to do, though, uh, is create a little macro here called test. And before we hit the record button, I'm going to set some options. So I'm going to have it record keyboard events. Uh, and that's it for this first round here, because I'm going to show you a different one that I set up that uh, has some mouse clicks involved as well. And you can also have it record the delay between the time that you do things. So what we're going to do is leave both of those things in. I'm going to hit the record button now, and I'm going to say, uh, hello there. This uh, is a test. I think I probably have a typo in there. Then I'm going to hit Control S. And now I'm going to click the stop button here. And it does re remember uh, this, the click that you make to stop it, unfortunately. But uh, you see now we have 111 events. So it has all the key presses and all the delays between those key presses. I'm going to hit OK here. Now that is assigned to uh, our center mouse. I'm going to just clear out my notepad here real quick and pull up our mouse button. So I'm going to push the top mouse button now. And as you can see, it is typing out at the same rate that we typed it when we were initially recording this macro. And then it executes the control S and can save it. So you have an idea now of you know, really the power that these macros have. And they're very easy uh, to kind of get configured and working with them. So now the other thing I'm going to do real quick, uh, you'll notice here on this button, we have it assigned to sniper right now. And that one, uh, I was able to uh, do something called the sniper mode, which basically uh, slows down the mouse uh, pointer while you're pushing the button. So as you can see, my mouse pointer is moving at a you know, pretty rapid speed here. You can see how much I'm moving the mouse to get it to, uh, to get, you know, cover that much ground. If I hold the button down now, you can see that same amount of movement 
uh, doesn't give me uh, the, same, the same amount of movement on screen. It kind of just slows down the pointer so I can uh, really get a more finely controlled uh, mouse control. So there's a lot of, again, different things that uh, you can do on here to get this going. So we're going to cancel out of that. Now, I did set up one thing that was pretty cool on this button here called the Counter-Strike Test. And I want to show you uh, that macro. So I'm going to pop into the action screen here. And what I've done is set up a little string of things to happen when I push that button. So what it's going to do is press uh, key one on the keyboard. It's going to pause for a minute, release the key, and then it's going to fire the weapon in Counter-Strike. So we're going to go through three different weapons and have it uh, fire all of those off. As you can see, you can kind of move things around to uh, configure them in a certain way. So we're going to pop up Counter-Strike now. I have it running, and I'm going to pull up our mouse image again. So uh, what we'll do here is resume the game. And now we've got our little guy up here. I'm going to hit the... Uh, top button and you'll see now he's going to fire his weapon off there switch it again uh, fire it again and uh, now he's got the knife out and that was all through a macro that uh, was set to that button i don't know if that's cheating or not but you can if you've got you know a, you know an R a real time you know first person shooter or whatever you want to throw a grenade or something like that uh, you can just configure the button uh, and it will do that and then switch back to your weapon so you, you can do a lot of tweaking on this thing to really get it uh, to where you want it to be uh, but it does have some really cool features to that configuration. And this is just neat, just that you can do this level of detail. Uh, in the action screen here, remember all of those macros so you can come back to them at any time uh, and edit them if you want. So you can click on here, go to edit. Uh, you can then even edit individual events, move things around, adjust the pause as you're going there. So a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of fine detail on it. Uh, as you go through all of this. Now there is some other sections here. You have performance. You can set uh, five different DPI stages. And again, that's the amount of sensitivity. And uh, right now the mouse by default is configured uh, to change those DPI settings when I push the button up here on the top to uh, increase or decrease the uh, DPI settings. So you can get really uh, crazy with this. The 8200 DPI is just too fast for me, but maybe you've got some usage for it. Uh, but without having to go into the control panel, you can just click the buttons uh, and get all that stuff set up and operating. So the other option here is the lighting. And I will pull up our mouse again here and uh, move this over. And you can set these lighting uh, components to just about anything you want. So we'll click on the back one here. Uh, we can then uh, maybe uh, hit this uh, turquoise or this green color here. So let's just make it green. And as you can see now, it is lit up green on our uh, mouse there. I can maybe set the headlights to uh, do a different color now. So we'll uh, point this here. Let me see if I can use my trackpad here at the same time and we'll switch it to red maybe and so that'll go there and you have I think there's a color picker on here as well so you can kind of go through and find the color that uh, best picks what you want it to do you could even have the lights change color as part of those macros so if you wanted to make sure if you, if you had some mode you wanted to set and you wanted to make sure you were in that mode uh, you can assign a color to uh, have it kind of uh, configured into that position so there is so much that you can do with this mouse that we could spend hours going through all of it but this kind of gives you an idea of the amount of detail that they've uh, set up this mouse to do so that is the corsair saber and just as a mouse it's a nice mouse it has a really nice feel to it it's very lightweight uh, I like the precision of the laser optical sensor on it. You know, so all those basic mouse features are great right off the bat, but it's really interesting when you get into that software. I mean, the amount of control you have over what this can do is pretty remarkable. I'm just uh, blown away by the level of detail that you can get into with this thing and the ease in which you really can record those macros. I mean, it's not hard to do. You certainly have to spend some time when you are doing that macro recording because it can record everything uh, to really get it configured properly. But it's really impressive what uh, if you spend a little time with it what you can do and I think those uses go beyond gaming and that leads me to my only gripe at the moment with this is that it doesn't uh, yet work with the Mac or uh, Linux you can certainly plug it in and have it work as a basic mouse all the buttons will come up and work but uh, you can't do any of that configuration that you just saw on other platforms at the time I'm recording this review so hopefully they'll make a Mac uh, version of their configuration utility and Linux version too because uh, this is a really cool mouse that I think can have a lot of uses in a number of applications just given uh, how configurable it is. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.